Utah Congressman Jason Chaffetz, thank you so much thank for you. being part of Three Questions today. You met with President Trump for 30 minutes in the Oval Office. He wouldn't let you talk about anything that had to do with the House Oversight Committee. Why not? Do you feel like he was stiff arming you as the chairman of that no, committee? No, to, to the opposite. He was trying to say, look, you do your investigations. You do what you need to do. I met with him in Philadelphia briefly, and he said, you're doing a great job. Keep it up. I see you on television. But he was trying to send a signal that he wasn't going to put a heavy hand on one direction or the other on any investigations. And I think it was the right, right message. You have said that the president is exempt from any federal conflict of interest yeah. laws. Would you be saying the same thing if a Democrat was in the White House? Yeah, that, I mean, I, I had to go back and study it, but Section 208 of the Criminal Code, the president is exempt on those types of things. And I would remind people, I never did an, a, an investigation of Barack Obama in his personal life. I never did one of Hillary Clinton or Bill Clinton for that matter. Um, I investigated how they were spending money, how they were using or misusing government resources, and I expect to be equally as vigorous on Donald Trump. Now, you were quite outspoken uh, in your criticism of Donald Trump during the election. Right here. Yeah. After your meeting with him, how are you feeling now? How would you rate his performance thus far in his presidency? Well, we're only still days into it, but I think he's off to a roaring start. He's, I think he's showing a, a prowess and, and an aggressive nature that America was expecting him to do. I think he's disruptive to how Washington, D.C. operates, but again, that's what he campaigned on doing. I'm not going to agree with everything that he says or does. I don't, I don't expect to, but here's what's markedly different. The fact that I, as a member of Congress from Utah, had 30 minutes in the Oval Office talking about issues that were important to us. I led with Bears Ears. That never happened with Barack Obama. We asked, begged, and pleaded for a meeting with the President about Bears Ears, and he gave us a stiff arm. Donald Trump invites us in and allows me to give the, make the case about Bears Ears. That is a huge sea change that I think is important to Utah. And, and increases my ability to be effective in Washington, D.C. Contrast your feelings about Donald Trump earlier when you said that uh, yeah. in good conscience you could not look your daughter in the face and support a man like that, and now you're seeming glowing compliments of the man in the office. I think what Donald Trump did years ago is intolerable, and we should call it out. And I think anybody who is going to act and say and do those things um, those should be called out. And I withdrew my endorsement. Now, before the election, I also came back and said, I, but I am going to vote for him because uh, he's so much better than, than Hillary Clinton. And the Supreme Court is such an important thing. And look at what Donald Trump did with the selection of Neil Gorsuch. I think he's demonstrating that, my goodness, thank goodness he's in there as opposed to, to Hillary Clinton. Uh, but again, it'll, it, we'll take the policies one at a time. But uh, so far, he's off to a very good start. Let's go back to Bears Ears, if we yeah. can. You spoke with President Trump about Bears Ears. He allowed you to present your case. Is that argument, the controversy over Bears Ears, is it more principle or is it practicality? It, it, it's both. I, I thought it was very arrogant and audacious of President Obama to not ever talk to the delegation, never visit, and then designate 1.35 million acres on a parcel, a huge swatch of land, where every single elected official at every level that represents that area is opposed. And so I talked about the principle. I think he was, is kind of raised the eyebrow about the fact of how big the land is. It's bigger than uh, Delaware and Washington, D.C. and Rhode Island combined. Um, there are things worth preserving there, but they already have federal protections. So uh, I think it's both the practicality of it how devastating it is to the local economy there in San Juan County, the cattlemen in particular. People have farms and ranches and run cattle in those areas. Uh, but also the principle of it. It's just fundamentally wrong. It's an abuse of the Antiquities Act, and that's why I want to reverse it. What is the downside of Bears Ears National Monument remaining a national monument? Well, particularly to the local economy there, you're going to have people, fifth generation cattlemen, who've run, been running their cattle out there, Suddenly, the priority isn't to make sure that there's a balanced approach and proper protections for the land, but they're also, you'll see the, the cattlemen have to leave, and you'll see those families just devastated. And fundamentally, I just think the approach is wrong. There, like I said, there's things, there are things worth preserving, but 
to do it this way is just absolutely fundamentally wrong. It really is. And what I remind people is it's still federal land. There's still federal protections down there, um, but it's just not the right thing to do to make it a monument. Now, Bears Ears has become a, an incredible political football. Yeah. Patagonia has pulled out of the Outdoor Retailers yeah. Association show here in Utah in protest. The outdoor retailers are looking at leaving Salt Lake City, actively looking now. What is more important, keeping control of that federal land here in Utah or the $42 million that outdoor retailer brings into the Utah economy? Look, we love the outdoor retailers. We want them to thrive here, but we're not going to be bullied as a state by some company who's got a a radical environmental uh, agenda. We do more to protect lands and create a proper and great multiple use atmosphere in this state than just about anybody. And if they want to go somewhere else, they're going to go a place that's not as nice. And that would be a, a cry and shame. Uh, but we shouldn't be bullied into this. We have done so much to protect this. The public lands initiative that we put forward is something they should have gotten behind. It would have protected 300 contiguous miles down Desolation Canyon with wild and scenic designation. We could have taken the Cleveland Lloyd uh, area and made that into a monument. There were so many things. We were going to add 20,000 acres to Arches National Park, and they said no to that. And, and so you really got to scratch your head and say, what is this really behind? What's really behind what they're trying to do here? And uh, I, I thought it was out of line and uh, disappointed to see them leave. A lot of people enjoy their products, uh, but we should be bullied. You have said that you're going to continue your probe of Hillary Clinton's emails and her handling yeah. of top secret information. Where is that investigation right now? We really need documents from the Department of Justice and the Department of State. I would remind people that the State Department has its own ongoing open investigation. The Inspector General uh, for the Department of Justice, Michael Horowitz, is conducting its investigation. But we can't conclude in uh, our investigation until we get all of the documents. And there are still literally tens of thousands that are being hidden uh, primarily at the Department of State. Because Mrs. Clinton lost the election, do you worry about the impression that you're piling on in this investigation? I, I've heard that accusation. The investigation didn't start because of a political election, and it's not going to end because of a political election. I think if you saw me just walk away from it after an election, people would have rightfully said, aha, see, he was, but no, that's not the case. We have literally thousands of documents that somehow mi migrated out the door. How did that happen? Who are the people that were responsible for this? This, this classified information is supposed to be highly sensitive and compartmentalized so it can't walk out the door. We better solve that problem. And then you have problems at the Department of Justice. I mean, we have a long list, unfortunately, that has not reached its natural conclusion. What are your thoughts on Education Secretary Betsy DeVos? Um, I, I've shaken her, I shook her hand at the inauguration. I don't know much about her. The Senate really has advice and consent. But if it was up to me, I'd put her out of a job because I want to close the Department of Education. There shouldn't be a federal Department of Education. We can educate our kids properly here in Utah between parents and students and teachers and administrators and school districts and state legislators and school boards. We got enough administration in place. We don't need some Yahoo desk jockey out of the Department of Education to tell us how to educate our kids. So I'd like to put her out of a job if I could. Uh, you have a bill in Congress right now that would do away with the Department of Education. Why is that, and what would happen to the initiatives and the projects that are coming out of that department right now? Well, Utahns pay taxes, but then you have 4,500 people at the Department of Education, more than half of them making more than $100,000 a year, doing who knows what, giving us all sorts of mandates, tying us up in the testing that we have to do. It's offensive to think that some desk jockey in Washington, D.C. knows better how to educate our kids than Utahns. We care deeply about them. I just had the Utah School Board Association, I think that's their name, that came in and said, please get rid of um, Michelle Obama's uh, prohibitions on how we do school lunches. Of course we want our kids to eat well. We're going to take care of them. We're not going to do something that's going to be harmful for them. But why is it that Washington, D.C. has to control this process? Utah can do it, and that, that's the principle that I think drives us more than anything. You have said that you are interested in running for governor in 2020. Are you still on track for that? 
I'm a definite maybe. I don't know. That's, that's way out. I have trouble figuring out, you know, what I'm going to do in a couple of weeks. I've, I've, I've tried to be honest and candid and say I really doubt that I'm going to run for the United States Senate. My life will be complete if I'm not in the Senate. But my goodness, one, one task at a time. That, that's, I've left that door open, and somehow that gets interpreted as a lot more, but maybe. A definite maybe. A definite maybe. Let's go back to uh, President Trump and your meeting with President Trump. Yeah. In your meeting with President Trump, you must have come away with an impression of the man as a man and as president. Yeah. What, is, what are your insights that way? He was nice and gracious. He was inquisitive. Uh, we talked about topics that I think he maybe hadn't been peppered on in the, uh, in the, in the campaign. Um, we talked about everything from civil service reform and bear's ears to postal reform. He was very keenly interested in embassy security and embassy construction. We have a major problem in London that I needed to deliver some bad news that it's supposed to open at the end of the month after spending a billion dollars and it's not going to open. And he was just wondering why did we build a new embassy as opposed to refurbish the old one. And we had a good long discussion about that. And, and I said, Mr. President, they desperately need your help on this. So he was, he was very much a businessman, um, but I was naturally more inquisitive than I thought he would be and very gracious with his time. After your meeting with President Trump, if you had to give uh, a projection of what kind of a president he's going to be over the next four years, what would you say? Um, I, it's so much better than where Barack Obama was. I don't think Barack Obama had uh, a natural inclination to engage Congress. And even in the first few days of his presidency, the president's reaching, reaching out to him, the ranking member on my committee, Elijah Cummings, talking about prescription drugs. He's reaching out to me. He's, he's ha asking questions. He's allowing me 30 minutes in the White House one-on-one uh, -on -one to talk about issues that are important. He has that natural inclination, and I think that can only bode, bode well for the nation and for Utah. Whereas I sat there for eight years with Barack Obama, and other than prison reform, never got an invite, never had a question, and neither did my colleagues on either side of the aisle. So he has a, still a golden opportunity. Some of these more volatile uh, you know, uh, tweets and whatnot I think get us off message, and I, I would hope he'd tone it down, but you know, who am I to tell the president what to do? But I, I think that gets us off message and off the, the direction of where the country really needs to go. After your meeting with President Trump, what surprised you the most? How much time I got. I mean, he wasn't rushed at all. Uh, the fact that he would follow up and ask questions. I was hurt. I had heard that he was just going to be rapid fire, uh, but it wasn't like that at all. I mean, he told me stories, asked questions, uh, wanted to learn more. And, you know, I got, I went in there for a 15 minute meeting and 30 minutes later we were done and agreed to try to get together again soon. Do you think the media and the country is misunderstanding him right now at this point in his presidency? No, I think the media is running around with their heads cut off, their, their heads exploded. They can't believe that Donald Trump was the president. They had predicted for two years it would be Hillary Clinton. It was her, their candidate, and I, d I think the media still doesn't get it and doesn't understand how he convinced 30 of the 50 states that he was the right person. They, they, they haven't figured him out. They, they don't understand middle America. Utah Congressman Jason Chaffetz, thank you so much for it's being fun. part of Three Questions. Thank you.